Now, patterns are fairly easy to create, but sometimes some patterns are a little more complex, especially when they're interlocking patterns, patterns that run into each other rather than the normal step and repeat. One such pattern is bricks. We're going to come in here and look at a brick wall. Real close here, and there's a brick wall right there. Now, those bricks are interlocking into each other. Let's go in there and create a brick pattern. You need symmetry. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to turn on my grid. And what's going to happen is our bricks are going to be the size of one of these little blocks here. I want the subdivisions to represent the grout in between the bricks. So I'm going to increase the number of subdivisions to a higher number so they become little tiny ones. And we can see them back here. And I'm going to go in there and change it. Another thing to keep in mind is that you need perfect symmetry. So in order to get that symmetry, I'm going to use an odd number. And it might seem odd at first, but you'll understand it as we start to create this pattern. So I used 11, which gave me enough of a size for that grout between the bricks. So I click OK. Now I'm going to zoom in to see my bricks right here. In a layer, I'm going to create the first brick. And I'm going to go in here and select a section. You can see it's taking up four blocks down. And I'm going to go in and pick a color for my brick, a little redder. And we'll pick a color like that right there. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in the layer with that color. Foreground color, do it. So now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy it straight over, leaving one subdivision in between. There's my grout. And now the reason for the odd number is so that I can now duplicate this and center it underneath the other two. There's the reason for that odd number. See? Because I have five on this side, five on that side, and that odd number gets centered directly underneath the one above it. So now, what I'm going to do is create my pattern. That's it. That's all I need for the pattern is three bricks. And I'm going to select it like this. Now you notice that my selection is such so that it's flush up here. The step and repeat, it needs a grout up here. There's the grout up on top. And it's flush here. There's the grout on this side. I have five sections here. The six that are missing are right there. So now I can turn off my background so I ensure that I have transparency in between and I define my pattern. It is that simple. I'll go in there and call it brick. Make it happen. Now I can just throw these away. I don't need them. And I can pull back a bit. And what I'll do now is I'm going to turn off the grid. I don't need to see it anymore. And in my background here, I'll put some color in the background. We'll get some color for the grout. Let's just say we want the grout to be this little beigey color like that. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with that. And I'm going to give it some noise, add noise. In this case, I am going to say non-monochromatic, so it'll introduce a few other little tones in there. And I'll just kind of bring it up to about eight right there. And I got this nice little fine grit to it back there. Or you might want to have a little more grit to it. So let's go with a 12. So there. And then in this layer here, I will create my pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and say, fill that with the pattern. And there's the bricks we just created. Click OK. And there we see our bricks, which I'm now going to go in there and give those noise. We'll add noise to that. This time we will say monochromatic and bring it out to about, say, 8. So we just get a little fine grain in there. Click OK. And we have the bricks. Now, if we want to take this a step further, you can double click on it to bring up the layer styles and we'll give the bricks a little drop shadow and we'll give them a little bevel and emboss, which will just kind of bring up the depth a little bit, bring down the size, just soften it up. So we have these nice little bricks coming out of the wall. But sometimes you have something that's a little more complex. Pulling back on here, we have another brick wall right over here. Now, in this low-res version, we really can't quite make it out. So I do have a high-res version of that section right here. So you can see that. There we see this brick pattern. Now, here we see that the bricks are separated by a row of small half bricks. And also, this building is older. So you see that the bricks seem to have a little wear and tear on them, a little aging to them. They're a little more broken up. So that requires a whole other type of a pattern. 
something that where you won't really see the pattern, but you will see the damages in the bricks and so on. You'll see that some bricks are discolored more than others and so on. Let's go see how that starts out. That starts out this way. I created four little bricks and each one is different, as you can see. I can take those bricks now and I could duplicate it. And the duplicate, I will bring down and center it below, bring it up a little bit. And those I will do maybe a flip horizontal or a flip vertical, anything to start making them look different. Now, you know that, yeah, well, this guy looks like that guy, but he's reversed. You can take individual bricks within this group and start to break them up. What happens at the end is that you end up with a pattern like this. Here's the basic pattern. So you see there's a lot more than the three bricks we used before, because that way we're going to get enough variety in here, so you're not going to see it. There's the row of half bricks, which are also varied in shape along the top. Now, the symmetry is perfect. We have a pixel right here. We've got two pixels between the others. So that one pixel combined with this one pixel will give us the two pixels on either end here. So it will be even with these bricks here. We're missing this little chunk over here. There it is. So this is cut at a very precise spot so that the step and repeat will be seamless. Taking this into a brick pattern will complete the whole scene. Let's go see what that could look like. So here we see the grout, and there we see that pattern of irregular bricks in which each brick was handled separately. So I can go in here and with a dodge and burn tool, I can go in there and just lighten this one brick up. Let's go to the brick layer and we'll lighten this one up a little bit right in there like that. And maybe we'll darken one and so on. So we added variety to the entire brick pattern. So it starts to look like a wall that's fairly irregular and worn by the elements and so on. And here we have a larger section of that pattern, which was then used for the building that we see in Times Square. It was reduced heavily to bring it down to fit the actual scene. And there you can see how a complex brick pattern can easily be created.